everyone and welcome to today's virtual tour. I'm Christina and I'm here with Cassidy today at the Missouri Botanical Garden. Right now we are starting off our tour in the uh, William T. Kemper Home Gardening Center. We're on this lawn that's kind of in the center of that space of all the different demonstration gardens. And we're going to take a quick walk through some of this area as well as the Japanese garden and um, stop at a sort of fan favorite spot at the end where the water irises are blooming along that zigzag bridge in the Japanese garden. So with that, I will get this tour started. So as I said, we're here in this lawn space in the middle of the Kemper Center for Home Gardening. It's a really overcast day. It was actually predicted originally to be thunderstorming right now, but that's holding off for now, though it might, the skies might open up any minute, so. Um. <laughs> Just bear with us yeah. if we run for cover. <laughs> um, I do want to mention while we're in this space, um, I see this shrub here, um, tree, shrub. I think this is a smoke tree, maybe. Oh, it's really pretty. It caught my um, it caught my eye with the pink, sort of wispy little. I'm not sure what this is, but I I want to. It just looks really nice in the landscape, and this is I think a part of the center for home gardening that a lot of people miss. This lawn space. Um, because there's really sort of only one way in and out and uh, but it's really nice the way that they've layered it in here there's a little chipmunk back here I don't know if you'll be able to oh, see but he's... just having a fun time rolling around back there <laughs> oh you've interrupted his fun time I guess we did we've scared him off sorry fella <laughs> But a lot of purple blooms, purplish pink kind of concentrated in this space right here. But you can see there's really a wide variety along this border here. Yeah, that uh, bright sort of lime green is a sumac. Um, and I think that's something, you know, when people are planning out home landscapes, like that's a, a something to take into consideration is that um, Green has a green has a spectrum, and so you have uh, dark greens, dusty greens. Dusty like greens. greens. Yeah, and then, evergreens. And then the lime green like this, and so it's definitely a color palette that you can can play with in your plant selection. And, and if you've never been to the uh, Kemper Center for Home Gardening, um, this is definitely a place where you can come and um, get a sense of that sort of landscape building. Uh, there's, I believe, 23 different gardens within this space that are all designed to show you um, different plants that are... Um, going to be more likely to be things that you might plant in uh, in a home gardening landscape. And they do change what is planted in this area from year to year as well. So they're doing some experimenting kind of on the behalf of whoever wants to visit and um, be inspired potentially by this area. So sometimes you'll see things that the experiment isn't necessarily turning out the way that um, you had hoped or would be ideal and then you can note to not plant that thing in this area but um, every year based on some of the things that are tested um, and grown in this area our home gardening staff creates a list of plants of merit and this is done um, along with other gardening and nature expert uh, associations in the area it comes out every year and you can find that on our blog at Discover and Share. 
um, The Plants of Merit 2022 just came out this year a couple weeks ago on that blog. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're still looking for um, anything to plant in your garden. There's everything from annuals to perennials, trees, shrubs, um, things that you can eat, vegetables and fruits. So definitely worth checking out if you've got a garden of your own at home. And this space here, it's sort of interesting. <laughs> um, these are all different grasses, like lawn grasses. So that's something um, that is sort of trialed here for people to see what different mixes and grass types um, grow really well. Uh, there are a lot of grasses that, um, depending on, depending on the, the type that you go with, might do well in sun uh, or well in shade. Um, and then I actually really am a really big fan of this longer strip in front of all of our sort of grass samples um, because this was planted as an example of a uh, pocket prairie or mini meadow, whichever of those alliterative terms you like. <laughs> um, but the idea that you can, um, you can plant instead of lawn grass, turf grass, that you can plant something like this um, and have it fill a space and it's going to be a lot, um, one, you don't have to mow it, um, but it's also a lot more pollinator friendly than cut grass uh, and will eventually, especially as the, the season progresses into high and late summer, you'll see a lot more color come into this space. Uh, so it's a way to mix grasses in with other plants in a way that's uh, lower, uh, low to no mow. Um, and so this is just kind of a neat, neat spot. And if you go online, there's all kinds of information um, on grass care, lawn care that the, the Kemper Center and Kemper Center staff provide. So, um, This is a really really pretty I thought this was some sort of columbine. It does have a I, similar look. Yeah, I it the leaves look the same. I'm not seeing a sign that says it's columbine, but it really looks like a columbine, so that's what I'm gonna say that it is. A lot of the native columbines are are done for the year and if you have them I would recommend um, removing the seed pods. I've found just in my own yard if I leave those go too long I'll get lots of new little columbines in places I didn't want them <laughs> next spring. So we're walking through this, I don't know what you call this, it's a walkway. <laughs> Arbor, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. In the middle of the Kemper Center that is just looking amazing right now. One thing that we noticed um, as we were getting ready to start this video was all the clematis that is growing up the sort of columns supporting this area right now. And there are a few different kinds that we'll show you as we walk along, but just really beautiful and blooming right now something to keep an eye out for if you're in this area when you visit. Yeah, in this space, because it gets shade from all of the, the lattice work, um, you'll see a lot of shade-loving plants in this particular stretch. So there are, um, right next to us now, there are quite a few ferns. As we go farther, um, there are a decent number of hostas. So things that, that like shade do really well under this man-made shade structure. I think the ferns look really healthy right now. They do. And there's some other fun things. There's some alum root here. There are a lot of different varieties of of this that people will plant in their gardens as sort of a low 
uh, a low cover and they'll have a little one of those leaves to show how pretty the bottom is it's like a really nice reddish purple color yeah and the one of the common names for this is hairy alum root and i would imagine that's from all these little hairs here that you see on the stem and the underside of the leaf And as we head, so we're heading into the vegetable garden section of uh, the Center for Home Gardening. Uh, and here's some poppy. And this is the plant that if you enjoy a poppy seed bagel um, or, or that, ev that, that everything bagel seasoning that's mm -hmm. so popular, that this is a plant that's going to create those poppy seeds that are, are part of that. Um, it's called giant rattle, and if I had to guess, uh, it's, it's probably because of these uh, fruits when they form and then when the seeds, when it sort of dries out and the seeds are loose, I'm, I'm guessing you can probably shake it. It certainly looks like um, that old school notion of a baby rattle, a little bit with a big rounded top. But the flowers themselves are really pretty. And tall as well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, for, for, for scale, it's about four foot tall, give yeah. or take, maybe even a little higher than that. Some more of that clematis we were mentioning, growing on a sort of trellis here up this column. It is starting to rain a little bit, as Christina was noting at the top of our walk. But we can, we can brave through it for now. If only we had stopped by the member desk and picked up our member gift umbrella, <laughs> we would be in really good shape. We need a little, a little umbrella for our camera here. Little Brock umbrella. Can we get garden brock umbrellas? That would be... <laughs> I would love that. And um, as we're showing some of these different clematises... <laughs> Clamati? Not sure what the plural of that is, but... They are all different varieties, so if that is a flower you like, you can always come kind of peruse um, and see what variety you might like for yourself. Yeah, we actually have a YouTube video um, on our YouTube page that focuses on um, on a number of different flowering vines you might pick for the home landscape. So that's something as well that you can head over to our YouTube page and check out. Um, yeah, and this is another one that's blooming right now, a, a stilby. A stilb? I don't know how to say it. Well, here, we'll show the sign. Yeah. And our viewers can determine for themselves. <laughs> so both the, the white and pink that you're seeing here are just two different varieties uh, of the same type of flower. And then in here in front we have this bellflower is bright purple. It's yeah, and here's a lot of the hostas that we were talking about. So the garden, um, 
The garden actually has a dedicated hosta garden that's up closer to the front. But because hostas are so ubiquitous in home garden landscapes, uh, this is just another space that we have to display even more varieties that uh, people might be considering. I've been, I feel like I've heard people call these deer candy. <laughs> uh, we don't have to worry about that too much here in inside the botanical garden, but if you are thinking of planting these in a in a place where deer are a little more populous, I would just caution that as a warning to do your research before you uh, before you plant those. But you can see what a variety there is just between all these different hostas and shades of green, size, irrigation. Yeah, not nothing here is in flower yet as far as the hostas go, but this one is starting to flower. So I think people think of hostas as just these sort of big leafy clumps, which is true, but they do have uh, really nice flowers as well. And, and this one in particular is, is um, it's not fully open yet, but it is a little different than I'm used to seeing on um, on hostas, but you can you can see all the little flower buds in here that are sort of hidden by these bracts um, on the on the stalk. And I believe, and I'll probably be wrong as soon as this comes out of my mouth. No, I'm okay. Um, hostas are in the asparagus family, so you kind of see a little bit of that in the in the flower stalk and the way that it, it grows. This, this is a good area for um, a lot of annuals too, this whole Templer Home Gardening Center. So you'll see some really brightly colored annual plantings a lot of times throughout the area as you're walking through. Um, a lot of times in mid to late summer, this Kemper Home Gardening Center is one of the most colorful places in the whole garden. Just so many vibrant, different things because again, they are trying such a wide variety of plants back here. And as Christina was talking about earlier, and we're just sort of passing by it now, but it's, it's really easy to spot when you come here because it's got a big weather station in the middle of it. Uh, this is our climate garden and I've had people describe this to me as a place where 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 plants go to die um, and and they mean that in the nicest way and uh, so what what our staff is doing here they're they're planting things that that by the book shouldn't necessarily grow in St. Louis so things that um, when we're talking about the USDA uh, agricultural growing zones, St. Louis, I think, is a seven, um, give or take, on six. that scale, six, seven, That's and then right yeah, and, and so they're growing things from other zones that might be warmer, might be cooler, and seeing if they'll actually make it a couple of uh, seasons here. And so it's a way that they can trial something that maybe typically grows in Florida and shouldn't grow here. And if it can make it through a couple of winters, then it might be something that we try elsewhere uh, in the garden and in the landscape. And the same is true uh, for things that typically grow in cooler climates. If they can make it through the summers, then they're a good candidate. Oh, this is pretty. This is um, um, milkweed. This one in particular I've, I've always seen called butterfly weed. Uh, Asclepius, Asclepius, Asclepius. This tour is brought to you by Cassidy, mispronouncing all of the scientific names of these plants. Um, 
but this is a, a type of milkweed and I see this a lot in home gardening more than say common milkweed uh, or some of the others I think because it's lower growing and this orange is just so vibrant so it's uh, it's super popular. I, I don't know if it's as good of a host plant for monarch caterpillars as, say, common milkweed would be. But clearly the honeybees like it. Yeah, and here's a little milkweed bug, too, just hanging oh, yeah. out. Kind of blends in because the color, the coloration of the insect is actually pretty close to the color of the, the flower. But yeah, and this is another place where the horticulture staff is sort of um, trialing things out to see if maybe a different variety grows differently or if they like the color scheme. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of professional playing with plants that's going on in, in these spaces um, so that they can get a sense as they're working on other areas in the garden, how, how things may uh, blend and go together. I'm determined not to let this rain <laughs> derail our tour. So the central axis, the pools across from the Climatron, are the main place where most people probably think of seeing water lilies in the garden, but there are water lilies in this area too. Now these are smaller tropical water lilies, not the giant ones that you're used to seeing. Yeah, there's more than a dozen varieties here, and and this duck. <laughs> really made himself a home here. <laughs> and the water lilies are a great feature. The plantings themselves um, in other parts of this garden space are uh, tied in thematically with George Washington Carver's work. So this bronze statue here is representing um, the man himself, George Washington Carver, who is, um, was born a slave in Missouri and went on to become a really well-known botanist for his, uh, his work with crop rotation and alternative crops. So a lot of people know him for his work on suggesting different uses for peanuts um, as a crop that would put nitrogen back into the soil and help keep the soil healthy, um, but also have, uh, have that economic side to it and making sure that you want to grow something um, that's, that was going to turn a profit. And so he was really revolutionary in that aspect and this garden uh, pays homage to him and then through the plantings kind of brings some of that work um, into the modern day as a lot of the, the plants on this sort of um, terraced wall at the the far end here are crop wild relatives and um, work that's going on today to find out um, what plants can have that balancing act of being both uh, useful and profitable agricultural agriculturally but also um, also be good for the environment as well so some of that work is reflected in the plants in addition to the beautiful water lilies and even the container gardens that they uh, have placed around uh, the statue there of 
George Washington Carver. So a really nice place to stop. And, and as with our other lily pools, once we get into July, this space is going to look really good as those lily pads grow out and there's more flowers on display. So definitely worth putting on your uh, list of places to swing by as you visit. It's also a nice place to sort of stop and rest. There's quite a few benches in that area and that wall around. Just good places to sit. And Yeah, it's a bit tucked away because it's kind of between the Kemper Center for Home Gardening and the Japanese Garden, which we have just uh, entered here. And, and so I think a lot of people maybe pass through and don't realize there's a little bit more to take out of that space. One of the things that we can see as we uh, come around the shore here is our cherry trees, which were a big highlight back in April, now have the fruits on them. Uh, but this, as I have learned from experience, is not, um, not what we would categorize as edible for people. It's very... Um, very not tasty. <laughs> I, I, this I, is a Yoshino I, cherry? I believe so. And I, I, I blocked the taste out of my mind so I can't describe it. And I don't want to refresh my memory. It's just not very pleasant. But I see birds eating them all the time. So, so leave them for the birds. <laughs> yeah, leave them for the birds. But that's sort of, you know, I think the flowers get all the attention, but, you know, it's all part of the cycle. and. And here's the fruiting part that I think is easy to overlook, but a nice little dark round uh, cherries there. Off in the distance here, on that far shore, you can see the lotus coming up. Just right along. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's at a distance and and it's okay that we are. We're still probably uh, about a month or so out from the lotus blooms. But you can see that that shore has really filled in from the last time that we took a walk through here. Walking past the Drum Bridge and Tea House Island, one of the entrances to Tea House Island. It's very, very peaceful being in the garden in the rain. 
um, especially in a lighter lane, lighter rain like this. Um, it can really be a nice time to visit the garden, especially if you bring an umbrella, as we mentioned earlier. Um, but just wanted to mention that since there is some rain in the forecast this week, it's always a quiet time to come. There are fewer people if you are looking for kind of a peaceful getaway. And I think a lot of times when people see the little thundercloud or the chance of rain in a forecast, they write off the whole day. And so if you are able to come and visit in those moments when the rain is lighter or you're in between showers, um, those are really good opportunities to sort of come here when there's uh, fewer folks, which I think is how a lot of people like to experience the Japanese garden, sort of inside themselves for a moment of reflection. Oh wow, I actually have we didn't scout this out ahead of time, so I wasn't sure what to expect, and some of the photos I saw over the weekend did not do it justice. This is quite full. walking along. There are a few different varieties of species along here. And these are different than uh, the bearded irises that we featured uh, just a few weeks ago in the Goodman, Goodman Iris Garden. Um, these, don't, these irises out here don't have that, uh, that little beard, the little sort of fuzzy piece on the, the petals. And most of those bearded irises have, um, have bloomed and gone. That collection is definitely past peak. But these irises always continue that wave of iris blooms and bring it from the front of the garden back here to, we are, we are almost at the, the far south end of the garden here. But it's worth the trip. If you were coming here to see nothing but these flowers, it's about a 15 minute walk from the visitor center back here to see these. the best for last and this is probably just as good a time as any to end this tour for today but there's plenty we didn't get to to show you all the rose gardens are still looking great 
roses in particular in those gardens, looking beautiful. Um, the bulb garden as well as some lilies start to come into bloom. So there's plenty to check out here. Um, and if you're able to brave the rain this week or wait till this coming weekend, definitely recommend coming to visit right now. Thanks for joining us on this virtual tour and we will see you next time.